approval or modification, and there are no modifications to the agenda. No modifications? Oh, okay, nice. Thank you for calling that to my attention. Okay, number seven, public comments, non-agendized items. Do we have any public comments tonight? There are no public comments. No comments tonight. Okay, uh, item number eight. That's the revenue generating activities update, recommended action. Uh, on that, uh, we can have it, can have that presented tonight. Yes, good evening, commissioners. We actually have Chelsea Bollinger, one of our community services coordinators. She's gonna provide an overview of our revenue generating activities and provide that update to the commission. Go ahead, Chelsea. Thank you. Um, good evening, chair and commissioners. Thank you for having me here today. I am going to be talking about the gen revenue generating activities update. So next slide, please. Perfect. So I'm here today to talk about our marketing efforts. We've really done a great job this year with reamping it. So we've been working really closely with our city manager's office to create a consistent look with all of city hall and all of our flyers. So with that, we have been doing tons of pushing out on our social media platform. And so I've done s some example posts that we have. So we currently do posts before we have an event. And for the first one, we have our free uh, bulky item drop off, which will be soon November 13th. And just to show you guys what's going on in the community, oops. Um, we have 62 likes with that and 46 comments and 71 shares. So the big thing for us is focusing on the shares because that's going on other people's platforms and then continuing to circulate. So just because we have 62 likes doesn't mean that only 62 people saw it. It's on 71 people's timelines as well. So we're really excited that the effort that we're putting in is really paying off at our special events, and as you can see in the middle slide is, it's very small, sorry, um, but it is our Dia de los Muertos, so we always try to thank the crowd and let them just see what was going on so that hopefully they'll come to our next events. And then lastly, we have the Fall Festival, um, which had 130 likes and nine shares and that was just thanking the crowd again and directing them to the Dia de los Muertos. So we always wanna make sure we have a purpose in posting where it's directing people to our next event or saying thank you or telling them when our next event is. So we've been really trying to focus in on each social media push and directing them into the right direction. And then we also created a new timeline for our events. So we wanna make sure that all of our events are consistent so we've been starting to um, do the timeline of one month before, and then this assisted with generating over 59% of the target revenue. Next slide, please. Oops, there we go. Okay, perfect. So also with our sponsorships, we consider a sponsor as a monetary sponsorship donation, so either monetary or in-kind and in-kind means just services or products. And um, with that, we've been really focusing on tracking. So we're tracking who's giving what and making sure that we're not asking one particular um, organization too much. We're trying to spread it out to get more people in the community out to our events and donating and sponsoring more of our events. And with that, we've redesigned our sponsorship packet. So this is a little, sneak peek about what it looks like. So before we used to have an a la carte, which means the businesses used to pick what they wanted, which we thought would be the best thing, but it made it a little confusing. So we went into more of a package deal. So now with gold, this is everything that they get, silver, everything that they get in bronze. Like I said, this is a sneak peek. So we'll show you guys the real thing pretty soon. Um, and then, um, like I said, we're just doing our new structure and tracking model, so everyone's consistent in our department about how they contact sponsorships, so everyone's getting the same service. Next slide, please. I think there's a fee structure. Oh, okay. How come it keeps going back? 
There we go. So okay. Are you clicking it too? Is that no. It? Oh, somebody else. <laughs> I was like, I'm going like, to go ahead and, and pass it over to Cynthia. For okay. This. Sorry about that. I apologize. Uh, so currently, the Community Services Department is working with the Matrix Consulting Group to provide a uh, comprehensive cost allocation plan. So in order to provide a reasonable cost of services to our community, the Matrix Consulting Group is conducting a fee study within the department to provide a better understanding of the true cost of services and programs uh, within the department, and then hopefully help us to determine the possibility of modifying the current fees to lead to more of a sufficient cost recovery. Um, so once the study is concluded, a report will be brought to the commission um, in order to consider potential changes to the department fees. I'll hand it back over. And that is the presentation, so we're open for questions, and thank you. When will we see that study? Probably in the springtime, because it's a comprehensive study for all of city services, so they're looking at the fees for police, for code enforcement, for um, all the development impact fees, for engineering. So. Um, it, it takes quite a bit of time to calculate all of that. So once we have our portion of our community services, we'll bring it to the commission before it goes to city council. Following that, we could look at modifications or agreement with it, and then it goes forward to the council for their agreement. Absolutely, we're definitely looking for feedback and uh, recommendations from the commission so before we take it to city council. Six months to eight months, probably. Yeah, I, I think um, we're, we're, the goal is to try to close everything out before the end of the fiscal year. So that's why we're saying probably around the early, mid-spring time we'd bring it to, okay. back to the commission. All right, very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Can we uh, go back to the second slide? That one there. Whoops. Right there. Uh, can you tell me on the sponsorship levels the difference between sponsorship level one versus sponsorship level two? Yes. Um, so for the gold it allows them to address the crowd, um, so be on the stage at our special events. And so a lot of businesses really, really want that to be the focal point. Um, and then the next one is council recognition. No, I, I'm sorry, I'm gonna stop oh, you there. Sorry. If you noticed above that, it's the sponsorship level one, sponsorship level two, but it looks like for either one, you get all of those check marks. Oh, yes, sorry. Thank you That's for right. asking. <laughs> So um, for our level one events, that is our um, bigger events. Let me make sure I said that right. No, so our level one is our smaller events. Sorry about that. And that is like our spring fest, which has a lower attendance. And then our level two is our bigger events. So like the tree lighting. So we didn't want to price them the same because there's different people coming to those events. So our tree lighting is more like 5,000 where our spring fest is more like 1,000, so. Got it, that makes sense, thank you. You're welcome. I have a question. Uh, Chelsea, uh, uh, regarding social media outreach, uh, yes. I think it's awesome that you're, you're thanking the, the citizens for participating. I found too that if you ask questions, that also gets a, a, a better response too. Yes, absolutely. Do we have a, um, a motion to receive and file the provided report? Does it take a motion? Actually, it's not. It's, uh, we were just providing this update to the commission. There are some, some recent questions on um, you know, uh, how we're doing in this area since there was recommendations from both the commission and the city council to um, delay going into a full community foundation formation and, and exploring these areas. So. We've been working on this for uh, several months now, and we just wanted to provide this update to the uh, commission. Excellent, thanks. <coughs> okay, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, okay, any, um, all, in, just be all in favor of that report now? And all in favor say aye. 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 And all in favor? Thank you. 
So I'm going to turn this one over to Cynthia Moore-Ketcho to provide an update. Thank you, Jonathan, and good evening, commissioners. Switch here. So in 2019, the City of Menifee's Community Services Department hosted the first Music and Arts Festival in partnership with uh, MSJC as well as the Arts Council Men of Menifee and other community organizations. The event hosted headliner Thompson Square and overall the attendance was estimated at about 5,000 spectators. Uh, the budget for the 2019 event was allocated at $130,000 for the entire event. And while planning for the following year in 2020, um, the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic put a halt onto the large, uh, on all large-scale events statewide. Um, the Music and Arts Fest Festival was initially postponed and then later canceled due to the pandemic. But more recently, state and county guidance has allowed for large-scale events to reopen outdoors. Um, so with that and the current state of the pandemic, we do have the ability to reestablish outdoor events. So staff would like to recommend um, or provide some options on how to reestablish the Music and Arts Festival, festival going forward. The first option would be to request um, additional funds for the current fiscal year, 2021-22, as a part of the mid-year budget adjustment to host the Music and Art Festival in spring of 2022. So this option would allow, um, I'm sorry, thank you. This option would allow us to host an event similar to the uh, event held in 2019, with the exception of possible increases in costs uh, due to the services and materials. The second option would be to also um, request an additional $130,000, but it would be for the following fiscal year as a part of the annual budget <coughs> approval process. So this option would allow the city to, again, partner with MSJC, but in this case, um, we would ask to utilize their new stadium that they're currently in pro uh, process of building and should be completed by fall of 2022. The use of MSJC stadium would alleviate some of the additional costs that is related to uh, fencing, lighting, generators, and, and so on. And so those funds could technically be reallocated towards uh, the budget uh, for entertainment. So the staff recommends that the um, commission review the potential for the return of the Music and Arts Festival to, um, the schedule, to the schedule of city organized special events and recommend an option for the city council to consider. Thank you. And that concludes my report and I'm available for any questions. Thank you. I'm, I'm curious, if the amphitheater was constructed, would we be recommending having the event there at Central Park? I would actually, um, uh, that, that, that's a topic that's come up before as far as the um, utilization of the amphitheater versus uh, Mount San Jacinto College. And um, we were planning for the amphitheater to do events more like on, on the, the level one scale. Level one, yeah. Yeah, it's, where <laughs> it's more that 1,000, 2,000, like Dia de los Muertos, that was a very well attended event, 2,000 folks there. Um, but for these larger events where we're anticipating maybe five to 7,000 people, we think the stadium would be more appropriate, especially because it has that level of seating. And, and the reason I ask, it, it, it seems to me that that should be part of the equation. Absolutely. So you're not bouncing around. People like to know where it's going to be. Yeah. They get fixated on a site. So that helps me in my recommendation. Okay. Thank you. What does MSJC get out of this? Do they get money from the city? Is it publicity? Are we teaming up with them? What's the relationship? So uh, for the last um, several years, we've had a very good partnership with Mount San Jacinto College um, to highlight their Menifee campus. As you all know, it's a very beautiful campus. So for them, they actually enjoy having the community come to the campus um, learn about what's going on at MSJC. So it's actually good promotion for them. And they actually like very much getting involved with the community. We have a, a quarterly community partners uh, meeting with MSJC, and I'm co-chair with uh, Vice President uh, Jeremy Brown. And so I actually just spoke to him um, yesterday about this topic. And they're, um, since they're, they're building a football stadium, they want to use it just more for uh, more than football. Because as you know, football season, you get 10 to 12 games maybe half of them are at home. So they definitely want to get the most use out of it and definitely engaging the community and having it available for community events is one of their goals. So for them, it's a more of a PR thing than maybe to make a profit off of it, to, to bring down the cost of building the stadium. Yeah, um, we haven't really 
uh, factored how much it would cost to use the stadium. Right now, our partnership has been very good where they haven't charged us any fees for the events that we're having currently um, at, at there. So we, 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 we might imagine that there might be some maintenance costs because it's a new facility, something like that. I expect them to incur costs for security. Sure, and yeah. You can argue about that day, things of that nature. Yeah, and, and for those items related to the event, we've always covered those costs. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so yeah. when I look at the $130,000, that's in. That, that, that's all in there. And that's part of the um, thing for the commission to consider is that we incur additional costs not having it in the stadium because because there's a beer garden and there's some safety concerns. We've always kind of enclosed the whole area with fencing. And fencing is one of those items where, you know, Bryce and I have had to get some rental fencing for some construction projects. And when they give us a quote, they say that quote's good for seven days because we don't know what's going to go on with the price of steel. <laughs> and so... I go too far. Sure. Last I knew the beer garden was supposed to pay for its own fence and its own security as part of the package. That was the um, agreement. I'm getting too far back in time. That's where I left. No, that uh, that was a different agreement that we had with the Chamber of Commerce for the Independence Day celebration. We had a, a different arrangement with the Arts Council who we partnered with um, for this event. Okay. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> Is the Parks and Rec Department going to um, pay a certain fee? I mean, you have, uh, they haven't set a fee for us to use the stadium yet, or that's still in the works, or? The, they have not. I um, We even had a school summit last month where the president of the college, Roger Schultz, uh, he really emphasized the fact that he wants to have these community events there. But we haven't quite negotiated, you know, would there be a fee, even if there was uh, a rental fee, so to speak. Um, a, a, my opinion, I think it's a good value for the city because it, it, to use their facility versus, you know, building our own facility. They're, they're spending quite a bit of money on that that stadium, and it is going to be state-of-the-art. Uh, will there be room for vendors? That have, it, have you looked at that yet? I know it's way off, but... Oh, no, definitely. We, we were... Um, preliminary discussions is to basically use that whole football field. And, you know, uh, I've been at concerts at, at similar kind of football stadiums, and so we're looking at, you know, possibly having the stage at, at one end and then kind of line the whole field with vendors and have all the seating available for, for folks that want to attend the concert. And the, my other thing is I appreciate that there be extra parking now that that southwest parking lot would be open. That is definitely a bonus, yes. yes. Yeah. I had a couple of questions. Sure. Uh, is there still a music and arts council here in the city? There is a arts council of Menifee. It's okay. a separate nonprofit organization that we partner with for this event. Okay. Yeah. And if the uh, we're talking in the fall, so you know, in the fall we already have the fall festival, and our event we just had this last week, the Day of the Dead. Uh, how would this fit into that schedule when you're pushing into holidays? And, and the council had any, or, or the, the arts art, arts council have any input on timing, and or would they would rather push it to the spring in case there's delay in the construction or. Yeah, well, um, so it's calendared? We haven't quite um, determined that yet. Um, uh, part of the recommendation is um, it's either have it in this spring, 2022, when we've had it you know, in 2019, or wait till the stadium's constructed. But we, didn't, we know the stadium's going to be done sometime in the fall, but we haven't really pinned down that we will have this in the fall. Mm -hmm. So w there is a little bit of flexibility if it's just waiting for the stadium to be finished. I kind of read that it's a choice between this spring or next spring. Yeah. And I'd be curious if we were to recommend option one, do you even have ample time to line up entertainment with only, what, three months left till spring? And if we and fence and all that seems pretty tight. It, it would um, take quite the effort. Um, I, I'm, I'm very confident in our professional team here. <laughs> I think they could pull it off. But it would take quite the effort. But then there's also, to your point, availability of a, of a high-level act. Uh, uh, folks like Thompson Square, uh, Cafe Anderson. If you haven't seen it, Cafe Anderson has a, a Netflix show. That he lives in Greer Ranch. Yeah. <laughs> so he's a, he's a local guy. So he's mm. a nice guy, too. Uh, Parmalee. So getting those high-level acts, they might, be, they might be booked, especially because a lot of stuff got canceled and people are rescheduling their events from 2020 now. So we, we might be kind of on the tail end of trying to book somebody right now. Good point. Well, I'm leaning towards option two, but if you get in a bind for option one, I understand Bill Ackerman has a really good band. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that as well. Yeah. <laughs> All 
I'm leaning towards option two also for the same reason that there's a lot of things that have to be organized beforehand. Also that it would become a premier event in the sense it's a new stadium, really showing that off in conjunction with it. Exactly. And, and I think people are pandemic out as far as events go. They yeah. might really look forward to something big. And I expect we'll probably get a bigger turnout than we did last time for sure. Yeah. We'll pop that into emotion. I'll second it. And the other, well, the other comment I make is in 2019 and 2020, it was free. It was a free for the public, which was just great. I think if we can keep it that way with this budget, that would be outstanding. Our, our recommendation at this point, unless given other direction from council, is to keep it a free community event. Keep it, keep it free. Comes out of our yeah. taxes, but yeah, free. Yeah. <laughs> You've already paid your ticket, yeah. That's right, <laughs> prepaid. Well, while they're mulling it over, I'll make a motion that we go with option two. And I will second that. Thank you. <coughs> motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nobody opposed, so the motion is passed. Going on to item number 8-3, committee appointment review. Discuss and appoint Parks, Recreation, and Trails Commission representatives to the various committees as required. And do you have a list of those already? Or it's on there. Can I have the PowerPoint up, please? Pardon? Oh, I was talking to IT. So I'll go ahead and uh, give that report. Oh, okay. um, so we do have in front of you uh, the report for our committee appointment re review. As you know, there's been some changes to the Parks, Recreation, and Trails Commission. Um, so we do have some vacant um, positions in some of our committees that we have appointed. Um, so this is kind of the time where we kind of want to review that, take a look at how we're doing on some of our ad hoc committees. Um, and again, you know, just to make sure that we're keeping on track and ad hoc is a temporary committee um, until it serves its purpose. Uh, so we want to make sure that we're able to continue with some of these um, initiatives that were established by the, the uh, commission. Um, so if you have before you the list of all of our committees that we have and who's appointed on those committees. So we're going to open it up to the commission to discuss if we would like to make any replacements or leave things as they are. Yeah, on the Parks Master Plan Ad Hoc Committee, Tom. Yeah, Keith I thought that was, was Tom. I think is the it, parks it is make, uh, the master plan. yeah the parks make life better was Rick Croy and myself and the master plan was Tom and William. Sorry, that was my error on that no one. Problem. Yeah, okay. it, it is um, Bill and Tom. I'll change my name to Vacant. Okay. <laughs> and I I even met with <laughs> you guys too. I sorry about that. No problem. So, so then that leaves uh, two vacancies: okay. the Central Park Amphitheater Ad Hoc Committee, and then the Parks Life uh, Parks Make Life Better Ad Hoc Committee. The Central Park Amphitheater Ad Hoc Committee, last time Tony and I talked, it looked like that was a, a kind of a done deal, a fait accompli, right? Well, not, not really. Uh, Is it still? They're still, work, they're still, they're still, they're still pushing it. Um, I, I talked to Lisa the other day and Dee both at that breakfast, and uh, it's still on the back burner. It's still on there. They're, they haven't pushed it aside just yet, but uh, we're still working. They're still working on it. Of course, we have, I haven't heard anything. Now, Rick's gone. If I may uh, provide a brief update. So the city council did allocate all the funds um, for our construction estimate of $3.9 million for the amphitheater. So that is allocated. It is in the, the CIP, the Capital Improvement Projects. And we did hire um, TY Lynn to do the design. So we have them under contract. They are working on that. Uh, Bryce and I had a, a meeting with the um, design consultant, uh, Rob Barton, last week. So th that is working through the process. Um, the ad hoc committee, uh, we, we could keep it active if there are any updates as far as once we get closer to construction, if that's the pleasure of the commission. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Commissioners, I would be interested in being on the Parks Make Life Better committee. Sounds good. What was that again? I would be interested in being on the Parks Make Life Better committee. The vacancy there? This one. This one here. Okay, uh, <clears throat> it's uh, okay. Now that's David's uh, like would like to be on the Parks Make Life Better ad hoc committee. Is there any objections to that? Sounds good. If not, uh, do we just, just vote in favor of it? Well, Scott, what, what further work have you guys got to do on that? 
We've not begun, really. <laughs> we have a lot of work. Yeah. I don't know if Dave knows how much work we have or <laughs> any we consider. <laughs> but we, we need, we have a, a lot of brand branding to do, and I uh, imagine we'll be doing that next year, right? Yeah, we have some good stuff to show you guys, yeah. but yeah, they're, they're, they're uh, getting ramped up. Okay, <clears throat> so, so with the, the better, better life, <clears throat> make life better ad hoc committee, uh, David uh, would love to have that position if that's uh, something we can vote on. Do we just vote on it if we want? You, you may do it all in favor if you'd like. Okay, do all in favor of uh, David uh, being part of the Parks Make Life Better Ad Hoc Committee. Uh, in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Okay. I'd be interested in helping Tony out with the Central Park Amphitheater Committee. Sounds good. Hi. Yeah, because Rick's gone. Rick's gone yeah. Of course, we're not doing much on that right now, but yeah, we, there's the four people. There's the two commissioners, the two uh, mm -hmm. and then the staff there. Yeah. So, uh, so we, all, um, well, we have a request then from Mr. Ackerman to get on the amphitheater ad hoc committee. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, you're on. Okay. Very good. That uh, uh, concludes Scott, this item. Scott, do you want to do anything? I mean, you getting? Yeah, I'm comfortable with parks to make life better. You're, you're comfortable. I with think that? we're going to be real busy. Okay. Yeah. And then the uh, the Riverside Transportation Commission. We just had a meeting yesterday, a Zoom meeting, and um, you know, you, sometime you got to have the link. I think because I had everything going and I w I couldn't get on. I had the number, the code number, everything. I just couldn't get on. Hit the link, and boy, I was right in. So that worked out good. You need that to get on. So I'm, I'm happy with that one right now. Uh, Gloria is on that, too. Gloria Sanchez mm -hmm. is on that. And um, it's a pretty good group. Evidently, they were up to, what, 13 yesterday, I think you said? 13 people yesterday, so that's pretty good. Are there any, um, any other... Uh, O openings besides but these, this is it. Do we ever have alternates where there's only one member on a committee, or is it needed? For example, on the Transportation Commission, if Anthony was unavailable, is that a problem or not? It, it might be a, a good idea for the commission to choose an alternate. Because okay. that, that is the only uh, committee that has one person. Yeah. So if that's an option, I'd be interested in serving in that capacity. The, the citizens, yeah. excuse me, the citizens uh, advisory committee. That's coming up for citizen of the year, isn't it? Pretty quick. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's yeah. due up pretty quick. Okay. All right. Let's see what else. We have. I believe um, Commissioner Bengal had a request um, to create an alternate for the Transportation Commission committee. Who was that? Uh, Commissioner Bengal requested to uh, create an alternate just in case, um, uh, Chair Morelli, if you're not able to attend a meeting. Uh, and he uh, volunteered himself to cover for you. Okay. That's uh, all in favor of <clears throat> Scott uh, being the replacement for me if I can't make the meetings? Is that is that what you... Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So then Scott could become the, uh, my, you know, second in command, I guess you want to call it. And most of everything we do there is Zoom, the Zoom meetings. My preference. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, are the commissioners okay with all the other assignments that you have? Okay, so if no other changes, um, we've uh, completed this item. Okay. Okay, all in favor? Okay, special events. This is nine, nine, okay, community service department, uh, 9.1 di director's comments. I only have uh, two very quick updates. Um, Starting right before Thanksgiving, so in a couple of weeks, there's there's going to be some uh, renovations to the AV equipment here in the council chambers. So the council chambers will not be available the first meeting, our first week of December. So um, I wanted to put it to the commission and have you all decide if you would like to keep the meeting on December 2nd. If we kept the meeting on December 2nd, we would have to look at a different location, possibly at the KC Center. Or another option would be to um, move the meeting back um, one one week to December 9th. 
Move it forward. forward. Oh, sorry, forward, yeah. yeah. What would be the opinion of that? <laughs> I'd go for the ninth, personally. I'm going to be out of town, so I'm, uh, I've asked for an excused absence. So Granted. I won't weigh in on it. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, <clears throat> I'm open to any, any suggestions to make it work right so we have a quorum at least. It's, it's really at the um, commission's availability. We're, we're available when, whenever you guys would like to meet. I'm good with December 9th. Okay. December 9th. Is it okay, too? Okay, so we'll make sure we post a notice and um, that the second's canceled. December 9th. December 9th. Yep. Very good. And then my uh, second update, just very quick, we, we've been having a series of chats with the city manager. We had one earlier this month focused on community services. That's available on YouTube if you care to watch it. And we have one uh, coming up in the next couple of weeks. It's on Thursday, November 18th. And then there's going to be a focus on uh, police with holiday safety tips, and our fire department will be available as well. And that one is actually at the police department. They have a very large meeting room there that used to be the old council chamber. So it's, if you are available and you'd like to come down and talk to the city manager, meet the police chief, meet our new fire chief, that is going to be on Thursday, November 18th at 6 o'clock. And that is all I have for 9.1. Going to uh, 9.2 Parks in Progress update. Mr. Howell. All right. Howell. Good evening, Commission. Uh, just a couple, well, new updates. Um, for Talavera Park, as well, I'll go through once those. So the acceptance of that, so we'll open that park this month on the 17th. It's going to go to council for acceptance, so uh, KB Homes can take down that fence and the community can enjoy that park. We haven't yet quite set a ribbon cutting for it, but we're looking into a date when we could actually have it. Since it's going into winter and holidays, it's kind of rough to actually get some people there. So uh, we want to make it where the community can really come out and enjoy it. Um, Underwood Park is under construction, so is Remington Park. Uh, Sunset Park is the last one that's in the Audie Murphy. And I'll go through the, I got some more slides after this if I'm kind of jumping fast. Um, Sunset Park just started their 90 day maintenance uh, uh, Monday, and then Evans Park, the pump track, which is now the Gale Webb Kids Are Number One, um, that is still in environmental. Last night was the approval of the construction contract for that, so we have that locked in place to be able to start as soon as our uh, environmental is done. We're anticip anticipating with the environmental to be completed probably be end of January, beginning of February, so we can start construction at the beginning of spring and hopefully end construction um, about end of June, so right in time for summer when everybody's out and it'll get, definitely get used. So the pump track then should be done in June, sometime in June? Sometime in June, correct. Can I ask a question about Sunset? Uh, how did uh, how'd the builder get away with no bathroom there? So because of the size of the park, it's only, it's, it's a three acre park, but a few of those acres is actually considered, it, it's a basin. So the park itself is real small. So as I'll go through, I'll, I'll go through these. So uh, Talibera Park, like I had just mentioned, um, will be open this month. I don't know what that was. That was my stomach. Okay. <laughs> was it me? I'm just not. I think they started the eight okay. early. So because of the size, Sunset Park, there really isn't that much room and how small it is right in front of the, the neighborhood that's there. So that's why the, they got away with a, no restroom on there. So it wasn't them getting away with it. It really didn't fit inside the, mm. the park. So as it's there, you can see it has the full covered um, playground. The reason, I, I, it was almost two meetings ago, I said, hey, they're going to be done in 30 days. The only reason they weren't done in 30 days is you'll see in some of these other parks, the, the picnic shelter was back ordered. So they're waiting for those. I don't know if it was stuck off of the sea or where it was, but a lot of the parts are coming in later than, even though they ordered them. Uh, six, seven months ago, they still is getting longer for them to receive. So that's what took in an extra 30 days just for, for that to get in. Uh, Underwood Park. So the parking lot it is in, all the flat works, all the concrete is in. Um, they put in a good portion of the planting throughout the neighborhood or throughout the park. The back slope there that's uh, by the soccer field is there. The soccer field is graded. It doesn't have the soil or anything let yet that's on there. Um, and they've built some planter walls and things like that. So it's moving along pretty good uh, at Underwood Park. And then Remington Park is right in within the same different neighborhood, but same location um, as Underwood. The restroom's in, the picnic shelters are in, the um, cornhole is in, the 
again, the the only thing they're waiting on there is the playground structure, just like Underwood Park. So the park is almost completed um, on Remington, except for workout equipment, that playground that they're still waiting to be delivered. Once, as soon as it is, it'll be installed. Um, and then also just the striping of the pickleball courts that are going in there. Hmm. And that's all I have for the Parks in Progress, if you guys have any questions for that. Yeah, Bryce, back to Sunset again. So yeah. did, the, did the contractor get a waiver on the bathroom? Or it's just didn't fit our design standard. I just feel for the residents that live there that are still three blocks away from their home and they've got their toddler there that has to use the restroom and there's no facility there. So it's That's usually part of our design standard. We have different levels of parks and different sizes. And so uh, a park of this size where it's less than three acres, um, typically we have people that... Um, so if, if we have like a large sports park like Audie Murphy Ranch and we know that there's going to be maybe a tournament, you know, folks are going to be there for... Uh, several hours. We definitely require a restroom building for a park like this that's a little bit smaller where we will probably have uh, people kind of on a pass-through visit. That's uh, why we normally don't require a, a restroom facility. Do you recall what Silver Star, the size of that park? Silver Star is closer to four acres. It's a little bit, a little bit bigger. Just yeah. a little bit bigger. Okay. And if I may add on that, some of the Quimby, the, the actual parks acreage that they had to have, this is fits in on that. So adding this smaller park just kind of it tops over on when they're going to try to their budget wise on that adding a restroom facility at a smaller park like would, this would there ever be anything done at sunset that would require bringing in portable restrooms or anything no no we typically at a, a park this size wouldn't have like a large event or anything like that it's definitely for those adjacent neighbors to use and and uh, to bryce's point uh, Audie Murphy Ranch Brookfield, they did a wonderful job um, having that park system there. So this is like the fifth park. And so they provided much more park spaces and open spaces than required from, from the uh, Quimby requirements. So they've they done a wonderful job. And this is almost like a, an a additional bonus park for, for the, um, the residents there. You, you use the word basin. Um, it's hard to tell from these photos. Is it within a detention basin? Is it with a uh, gated off detention basin? Yeah, so it, it can, it's, it's not in these pictures, but it's right there on the uh, right next to the park. So it's prone to flooding or to the, water. The park is not. That's just uh, for water quality in that neighborhood that they had to um, put in there. So the park itself will not flood. No, it's down below the the basin is. Oh, okay. it's off to not the part of the side three of the park. acres. What's that? It's not part of the three acres, the basin? No, the basin is not part of the three acres. Yeah, the three acres is the, the park itself, and then the basin is probably about an acre it's, uh, itself, but it's not part of the park. Is, is Sunset one of the smaller ones that we have? So Sunset is one of the smaller ones. We usually try to keep it above about five acres. Um, this was There's a couple. Sometimes we make exceptions um, with when the parks are uh, we're taking them over. For example, what's, what's the acreage on uh, John Denver Park? Just out of curiosity. John Denver Park is uh, about a little over three acres, um, but it's actually, that was a county park before, so that was just one from a CSA that we, we took over. As a matter of practice, since this commission was started, we've basically felt anything less than two acres. We didn't want to talk about it as a park. Three acres is right on the line. Commissioner's right, and that's just because of cost for to ma maintain yes. them and everything that's that's why we keep it that way and Bryce there's a construction fence around it now s still so what's what's kind of fencing are the, the residents got a block wall probably behind them and so that construction fence right there is just on uh, the let's say it would be on the west side of the park right now and that's actually keeping out because those homes are under construction okay so that's keeping them it's keeping people out of the homes not out of the park and that the picture kind of is plays well, games with you there but you're it's keeping the them out of the construction site. So what will it will it be a wrought iron fence or no? That fence will be down. Those will be just a sidewalk there, and the homes are directly across the street. Okay. So that's the there's a street that's directly behind that fence. Oh, it's gotcha. kind of like an illusion. It looks like they're real oh, close, okay. but there's a sidewalk, a street, and then those homes. Okay. Yeah. I drove by there. I didn't get that close to it. There. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions regarding uh, parks in progress in the commission? Anybody? No. Uh, okay. Now going on to 9.3 solid waste and recycling update. Oh, we're going to turn it over to our uh, analyst, Corey Jones, to provide the update. 
Good evening. Uh, I'd like to provide an update on some of the outreach that we've been doing on the residential side and commercial side as it relates to Senate Bill 1383. Um, and so that just as a reminder, that bill mandates um, mandatory recycling for basically all businesses and residents and um, tasks the local jurisdiction, such as the city, to um, educate, monitor, and enforce. So just to highlight on um, what's been going on for residential outreach, we did uh, recently reconfigure the um, ad, if you will, um, that goes out at Menifee Matters that typically is the one page that waste management has just to start to begin to incorporate um, topics relating to SB 1383 so that people become more aware of that and then of some of the requirements that are um, and programs that are going to be established next year. Um, <clears throat> Chelsea also mentioned that we have our uh, bulky item drop-off event happening next Saturday. Um, there'll be two locations for residents to drop off their materials at MSJC and the other in the parking lot at Sun City Civic Association. Um, on the commercial side, um, I'm scheduled along with Art Marquez, who is our waste management rep, to provide a brief um, presentation at um, Minifee Munch. <laughs> I think that's what it's called, Munch with Minifee. Yeah, <laughs> Minifee Munch, which is basically a chamber um, event. Uh, and we'll be talking to businesses about some of the specific requirements um, under the new uh, recycling legislation and also inviting them to a webinar, which has yet to be um, scheduled, but at the time of the event, we will have a date for that where we'll go into more detail of um, the specific requirements for businesses. Um, I've also included uh, uh, into the bi-weekly newsletter that our economic development uh, team sends out um, that covers the same kind of information um, and we've agreed to swap that uh, verbiage and graphic out quarterly. Question? Yeah, just question. Sure. Uh, when's compliance deadline for this <laughs> food waste? Recycling. So for the food waste, so there, it's kind of like a culmination of, a, of laws that are already existing. So on the commercial side, you have 1826 and 341, and those laws have been basically mandating um, businesses to recycle their organics and uh, dry recycling since like 2011, 2014. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the residential side, it's the green waste and, f and you know, food scrap, as you mentioned. Um, and that... Uh, deadline is technically the 1st of January. However, there was recent um, legislation that passed that extended that deadline for cities because of the pandemic. Most jurisdictions really just don't have a lot of the programs in place yet. Um, so, uh, and you know, obviously that's an agreement that has to be made with the hauler to be able to process that level of organic material. So that's kind of where we are right now discussing um, modifications to like the franchise agreement with waste waste management to process residential food waste um, as well as uh, modifying our ordinance. Yeah, I understand waste management doesn't even have a place to take it yet. <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> the local facilities at capacity? I don't know. Can we can talk about that? Is that we're we're working with waste management now on on, on that operational plan uh, because as Corey mentioned, we're not going to start collecting until um, more likely the end of the first quarter of next year. And so then we're working with them on a, on a plan for the disposal of that because they, um, right now in your green card, all you have is you know your tree clippings and leaves and things like that. So once you put all that organic waste, it does increase the amount that will be in there. So we're, we are working with them on a plan for that. And they are very aware that it's a requirement, um, you know, as a hauler in the state of California. So they have recently um, told us that they've hired an organics manager um, who is going to be primarily focused on making sure they expand capacity in our area to service uh, customer cities such as Menifee. So hopefully next year they'll have you know, more options. Can't <laughs> wait. Yeah, fun stuff. Okay, um, and then I guess we touched on this a little bit, but my next slide are just, uh, is just kind of like a general update of where we are with the solid waste recycling programs. Um, so we're currently working on modifications to our ordinance. Um, which will basically, um, you know, incorporate some of the requirements of SB 1383, where uh, the city is required to, at some point, 
um, enforce some of the different programs and mandates that are under that um, umbrella. Uh, also, um, we are seeking funding um, to uh, try to assist businesses in, um, I guess, complying with some of the requirements uh, of SB 1383. Um, also, the Sorry, I lost my train of thought. So, so yeah, so we're 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 looking to um, assist businesses with uh, fund funding um, once we start going out and making a bigger push um, for them to become compliant. Um, we're also looking at some um, possible funds to assist um, senior or low income uh, communities. Uh, should there be increases to monthly rates as a result of processing organics? And um, I'm also working with uh, Cynthia and the rec staff to make sure that next year we can try to um, incorporate in recycling at some of our city events, especially our larger events. We spoke about some of those tonight. Um, you know, if we, we are looking to do events where we're uh, welcoming like 10,000 people, it would be good that we are diverting some of the waste that's generated at those um, events. So we'll be working on that, and that includes training for our vendors, um, standard requirements, and then also a fee waiver program for businesses that um, are able to um, transition and to uh, be more sustainable. Um, we're also talking to our purchasing departments on um, revising our procurement standards, um, talking to Bryce about, some, because 1383 also encompasses um, materials that we purchase as a city, so um, we have to make some updates to our um, administrative instructions and um, some of our uh, municipal code in that, in that respect. And then the last thing was, did anyone say workshops? So, um, this is a lot of information, and I try to like drill it down, but it's going to require a lot of outreach, a lot of education and workshops. So one of the things we did offer in Menifee Matters was for HOA or community groups to reach out to us to come speak to their um, group and kind of tell them about some of the new legislation and some of the requirements that are going to be happening. Um, and so the plan is for next year to really, really focus on educating businesses and um, residents on uh, what's required. And lastly, I didn't put on here, but just a recap of kind of like our kickoff event that we had um, in October was the uh, Clean Air Town Hall at Santa Rosa. Um, it was a really well received event for it being a first time event. Uh, we had a panel discussion, we had a ton of great partners hosting booths on, you know, a myriad of topics surrounding like gardening and, you know, just um, green topics, if you will. Um, so we had about 66 attendants um, that um, signed in at the registration table. And we've um, also since had about s the same amount, 67, uh, tune into the stream, the live stream of the um, a recording of the panel discussion. Um, so if you haven't seen that, also you know, check that out. It was it was a great discussion. I think that we had. So um, we're hopefully hopefully going to do that again next year. Um, we have kind of started to talk to MSJC about partnering um, once their students are back on campus. So I'm excited about that. So Corey, this is on the city for compliance and enforcement, then, right? This yes. city has to make these standards, not the waste hauler. It's it's on us. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I think. Might see a lot of rebellion on this. I got a question. <clears throat> Maybe this is a little far out, but you mentioned rate assistance for seniors and low income. Mm -hmm. How committed is the city? How is it locked into waste management? All the years I've lived here, it's been waste management. But in order to get rates down, competition is the way it should be done. CR and R is next door in Paris. They also do digesting of green waste already. They got facilities set up to do that. Uh, what, what's our relationship with the uh, waste management? How locked in are we? What does the city get in exchange for using that? The city negotiated a franchise agreement extension with waste management in March 2020. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, I believe, Mariana, correct me if wrong, or Corey, it's a 20 year agreement? 15. 20 15. 15 with a fi five year extension. Oh, I should buy stock and. <laughs> okay. I'm not advising you no, either no, way. No, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> yeah, um, so competition is what makes the rates come down typically. So if we're talking about having to augment somebody's costs, it's like counter counterintuitive. I, I was at an update with waste management the other day, and they said the CCNR facility is at capacity, and they will that's what not they be said. able. Yeah, 
I'd be able to accept it. I don't know it. about that. But <laughs> I'm just thinking in terms of rates going up for somebody who already is having trouble struggling with it. How can we help them? We're, we're, we are definitely looking at options right now within the rate structure. There is an option for a low rate for seniors. If they're a um, low producer of waste, they can get the smaller carts. If they get the smaller 64-gallon carts, there's uh, definitely a, a, a lower cost uh, to them for the service. So Certainly, for people on a fixed income like them, that might be a big concern. Yeah, so definitely if, um, if you know anyone that would – um, like to explore that option, have them contact us. We'll connect them with um, waste management. But but that is definitely available for seniors that are low producers to have those small cards. Agenda topic for uh, the senior advisory committee. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to talk to Gary about that. Sure. We we did recently. Or I, I recently attended a meeting and made an update, and then I uh, also uh, was invited later by Gloria to speak to the Oasis. Um, but we can certainly come back out, as I mentioned. I think the next year or two, we have the opportunity in the city, even though the city is tasked with enforcement, but we have the opportunity to really get out and like educate and talk to people. So, you know, we can always put them back on the schedule. Yeah, it's, it's a thought. I, I'm not telling you where you should go with it. But I'm thinking of Sun City Civic Association, people like that, which represents a lot of the people who have those, those fixed incomes. Definitely. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. That was a good presentation when you were out there the other day. I was there. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you for attending. Yeah. Uh, okay, on um, solid waste, is there any other comments or questions uh, for Corey or anything? If not, we'll put that one and ask for uh, okay on that one. Nobody? Anything? Okay, okay. let's go on now then to uh, 9.4. Recreation Division update. And back to Cynthia. <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. Um, so just uh, with the numbers here up on the screen, as of October, we provided program services to a little over 79,000 participants through, uh, throughout the year uh, to date, producing a, a little over $123,000 in revenue. So some of the highlights of uh, the program in October was that we distributed uh, over 8,000 meals. We provided 39 contract classes and 10 staff-led classes, which led to over 300 participants um, just in the month of October, as well as the skate park is seeing a great attendance um, on the days where we provide attend um, availability for skate skaters and scooters. We had um, 300 participants in the month of October. Uh, so for the senior programming, we returned to the indoor congregate lunch um, on November 1st, which was on Monday, and it was well attended. We actually maxed out on participation, um, and a lot of people are just happy to be back in person and inside. Um, and so if anyone is interested in, in signing up, we are um, taking reservations as a part of the process, so the number is available here on the screen. We don't mean you guys. We mean people that you may know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so You're making me hungry. <laughs> um, for the senior food box program um, that we do on a monthly basis, in the month of October, we did serve over 700 community members with uh, food boxes. Our next food box distribution will be on November 18th at La Ladera Park. And then additionally, for the month of November, we do have uh, the Give Thanks art class on November 16th. Uh, just some for some general recreation updates, we do have our... City Flag Contest, which is a new contest to introduce a new city flag design. Uh, we're currently accepting uh, applications uh, until November 19th. We're also in the process of planning for our Veterans Day event on November 11th um, in collaboration with the VFW. Um, and we are currently in the process of announcing our fall award winners for the teen uh, awards that are going to be coming up next week. So we are now doing it on a quarterly basis where we recognize teens in three different categories and, and then it'll culminate into a, a, an overall award ceremony um, which will award one teen, uh, outstanding teen of the year. Um, next we do have the Menifee's Extreme Light Fight which is going to uh, be opening up for registration very soon. Um, we do uh, anticipate plenty of registration and we are working with our um, public works department to design a, a GIS uh, map so that people can find the, the different locations of the houses that have entered for the contest. 
And then lastly, I do have uh, Menifee Moves. That is a program that's developed by Healthy Menifee, which is providing an opportunity for our residents to participate in light physical activities. So they'll be able to go out to the park and rediscover the area. And then each person that participates in the walk will receive a collector's button with the name of the park walk that they participated in. So we're looking forward to all those up, up, upcoming events. Um, and then I'll hand it over to Chelsea for our citywide events. Perfect, thank you. So I just wanna do a quick special events update about what we had going on during October. We had over 7,000 participants and Corey talked about Clean Air Day, so we had that on October 9th at Santa Rosa Academy. We have a really great relationship with them. That was from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. And like Corey said, we had around um, 66 participants. Then we had our Fall Festival on October 23rd at MSJC from 4 to 8. And we had tons of trick-or-treaters and costume contest participants. There was probably around 5,000 participants throughout the day. And then we had our Dia de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead, on October 29th at Central Park. That was from 5.30 to 8. And we had roughly around 2,000 throughout the night. So it was really well attended throughout October. Next slide, please. Perfect. And then our upcoming events are holiday time. So we have our Family Fun Fitness Day, which is Trot for a Cause, November 20th. And that's at Central Park from 7 a.m. until 12 p.m. for people to get out and get active before um, Thanksgiving. And then we have our tree lighting December 4th at MSJC from 4 p.m. until 8 p.m. And then we have our breakfast with Santa December 11th at the KC. There's three seating times. And the seating times are at 8 a.m., 9.15, and 10.30. And lastly, we have our Santa on Wheels which is from December 15th through the 21st with no weekends. But um, that's a 15-minute visit with Santa to the participants at home. Now, here we have a great Santa this year. Yes, does does do. Santa have to eat three breakfasts that day? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's three seating, so. Yeah. I know him personally. <laughs> Santa can, can have as much breakfast as he would like. <laughs> Or or as little breakfast as you want. order out or does he have to eat with the children? No, it's actually pretty good breakfast. I, I, I've taken my kids as well. Santa has to eat with a straw, though. It'll get in his beard. I had one question that doesn't revert. goes back a little bit. On the food pass out, um, a lot of the people that I run into, the older people that don't have anything, and I, and I explain it to them to go for it. Now, do they have to sign up ahead of time? Or they just show up to pick up the food? They can sign up ahead of time, but they um, also can sign up on the day of the actual pickup. And we would um, help them with the registration process from beginning to end. So they're able to fill out the form, and then we'll give them their food box to it. Okay, so then if they're, if they're eligible, basically is what it is. Absolutely. They, they don't have much if there's two, three kids, husband and wife. Okay. Yep. Because I've been just promoting it a little bit, but... Then I got to thinking about it, you know, maybe they have to make a reservation or something. Like no, okay. they can show up on the day of. Okay. Thank you for On the flag uh, contest, yes. I thought I'd heard that our commission was going to be responsible for choosing the winner, or did, was that just... We're going to, we're going to, uh, once we receive all the applications, uh, we're going to filter them down and then we're going to bring um, some of the top applications to the commission for you guys to provide recommendations for the top three to go to the city council for, for the final pick. So be on the lookout for that. Good. Okay. Okay, 9.5. Uh, any other questions or suggestions? If not, we'll go on to 9.6, capital improvement program update. <clears throat> okay. Uh, a few updates, and then I'll show some pictures here. Lazy Creek, the roofing's completed. Uh, the, just the roof itself made that old building look brand new um, compared to just from the, the street. So it, the, uh, the steel frame or the steel roof is actually, it's really cool. So both buildings match. Uh, it's completed on both of them. The doors and window frames are installed on uh, both of the buildings. Uh, every door except the larger doors that open up, those are... We're still waiting for those to be delivered that actually open up to the patio on uh, the new build. So when you bo open both of those, if you remember that you can 
it's almost like a, the room just extends out into the patio so you can have one big um, environment there. The HVAC is almost, it's installed. There's a few little things we're waiting on um, for some concrete. The fencing's underway. And then on Monday, the parking lot uh, is actually getting pulverized. So they're tearing out the parking lot starting Monday. Uh, we have a different contractor with that. That'll be done at the, simultaneously with the building. So they'll both be complete around the same time. Uh, they're doing the parking lot, a new skirt uh, entrance into the um, street so that there, there's a new ADA. We, we didn't want to have the old old parking lot that wasn't ADA equipped and everything to going into these brand new buildings. So we did that. And then we'll, we're also getting a trash enclosure um, with that. So all that will be completed here. And everything on Laser Creek is on schedule. I believe they have 27 more working days. Um, but we're on going. We're on schedule to finish that on time so you could um, just put that roof on just didn't you just this, this week right yes yeah, yeah. last week yeah, i was drove the, by there just a few days ago yeah miraculously it's all yeah wow. when you drive by it goes on pretty quick so yeah it, it's really so if you've seen it it's it's a beautiful it just makes the building and once we paint the building it'll it'll be wonderful nice um so the central park we talked about that that's the amphitheater so that design is still underway um the permanent park restrooms that's Lyle Marsh Park, the plans are 95% complete. We're waiting on a few little tweaks on there. Uh, we're planning on taking the order. for. I, we don't want to order the restroom too early, so we're waiting on that. So once we can go out to bid, we can order the restroom. They can manufacture that. Uh, that way we're not. they're not holding this big restroom building for us until we get our contractor. So we want to get those simultaneously. So uh, we're hoping next month in December I'm able to take that to council so we can get the purchase of the restroom so that will get built, and then we can get our contractor going for Lyle Marsh and then the pump track the plans are 10% complete and that'll be the built simultaneously with the pump track as well uh, different contractor we just wanted for the pump track a specialized uh, contractor for that and then the the curb and gutter with the restroom will be a different contractor that's coming in so that'll be two restrooms that are well one building but it'll have two different stalls so and a drinking fountain and things for the riders to use there uh, the park amenity enhancements, that's we've ordered new tables and benches for Lazy Creek, so the whole park will um, really uh, look new. And then the sports court resurfacing, that's John Denver Park. So we've gotten all the measurements. We're, we're planning on going out to bid, get some quotes. We're, what we're doing is removing that volleyball court that's there. So we're removing all the sand out of there. The sand is good, so we're actually going to – we're redoing the volleyball court at Lazy Creek. So we're able to replace that sand um, to Lazy Creek. And then we're going to fence it off and make pickleball courts there at uh, John Dever Park, which I think is perfect for the community that's around there. Um, it, it just gives another another park to be able to play at. I was going to ask a question on that pickleball court for John Denver. Do you get that much action in pickleball there? So by the community that's around there, so they will. Well, they're not going to get action now because it's a volleyball court, right. so they don't play. So as soon as we bring it, we're hoping they'll come. We actually haven't seen any volleyball action there, yeah. <laughs> and there's a very high demand for pickleball at all of our parks. Yeah, a lot so of basketball action over yeah. There. yeah. So volleyball is big, and it's Lazy Creek is where it actually gets used. Um, there's a group that actually shows up all the time, and they play a lot at uh, a couple times a week. So just um, upgrading that volleyball court for them and everybody else will be great at Lazy Creek. So we're putting a new border in there. We'll put a new net, all new sand. So it'll just be nice and fresh for them. So here's some pictures of Lazy Creek. Uh, just, I mean, it changes every day. These are from a couple days ago. You can see the roof on both building, the siding's in, uh, the drywall is going in throughout there. The little AC units throughout the building are in. Um, it's hard to get pictures. They look messy when I'm taking it like this in the construction site, but the, I'm there while the construction is going on. So hopefully soon we'll be able to uh, take everybody there, but we'll let everybody know when we're going to do a ribbon cutting for that. And that's all I have for the capital improvement. If you guys have any questions, I'll move on to maintenance. Which parks have pickleball? Pickleball right now? Yeah. So right now, the only pickleball court is La Ladera. That is the city maintained. Ladera, that's the one they got all of them. The pool. Yes, we have it fenced. Yeah, we uh, removed the, it was a tennis court before. And then what we did is take, just turn it into a pickleball. Because there's so many tennis ball courts at um, Spirit Park. We tried striping it at Spirit Park. We didn't know it was such a competitive thing against pickleball and tennis. They don't like each other. So we that's why we ended up going into making it on pickleball court. Okay. I, 
Yeah, I've seen the Lala Deer is always busy at the pickle bar. It is, course. yes. And then there is, there. there is uh, Heritage Lake Sports Park has some pickleball courts. Remington Park that we're building has uh, some we're, some pickleball courts coming in. So mm-hmm. just adding more and more. And it is a popular sport, and it's, it's all ages. So that, that's a good thing. <clears throat> the central, the central, not the central park, but the one out off of uh, Hancock, um, uh, uh, Hancock. Uh, Centennial Park, Centennial you mean? Centennial Park. Centennial Park has basketball, because so it has, basketball. yeah, have a pickleball. no pickleball. Yeah, so basketball, two baseball, and a multi-purpose field. They get a lot of action in that park, though. It does, especially with uh, the lights. You go there at nighttime, yeah. a lot of action, a lot of people using those fields. Yes, know. I know they get phone calls all the time for field rentals, um, and they just have to tell people, no, it's booked. So it's a good thing. Uh, it's a good thing, but it's a bad thing because we need more fields, obviously. So, Is pickleball by reservation? No, pickleball That's is. Just I was first just come talking serve. about just first the come. park itself when he was talking about Centennial. So uh, I'm sorry, but a La Ladera, is it reservation or is it first come, first serve? No, I believe it's just a group that shows up. So it's first come, first serve. That's there. Uh, they okay. show up on those days. Yeah. And there's, it's a big group that, yeah, you've seen yeah. that show up. Okay. Cool. A question on Lazy Creek. What about the preschool classes that were going on there? Are they still able to operate? The, they're at the KC Center right now. So we're a little crowded because we got the seniors back eating lunch and, and doing their activities. And we got all the preschool kids and the after school kids. And so, you know, they're using my office. Still, still and, yeah. working. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah. I have a question. <clears throat> uh, I don't. I haven't heard it come up here or any place. But the um, Heritage High School across the street, that empty, that big acreage across the street, did the city take that by any chance? I heard that they improved it. I, I heard that they put in a layer of rock and then sand and everything to offset the flooding in there, and they were working on that field. At one time, that was offered to the city, and the city didn't take it. And I'm just wondering if if there was some kind of agreement made and the city did take it finally. Oh, are you talking about the, the basin on the, the east side of Briggs? Across the street from the high school. Okay, so uh, that is um, a flood control basin. Um, unfortunately, it's outside of the city limits. So in order for the city to um, take the property, we'd have to annex it. So there, uh, there is a sphere of influence study that's currently going on. Um, LAFCO actually has a consultant that's doing that. So that's one of the things that we're looking at is, you know, is there an opportunity for this uh, city to either have a, a sphere of influence or further annexation to the east? Well, I can, the reason I brought it up, I heard that they had were trying to do some remodeling on it, if that's what you call it, you know, bringing in layers of gravel and, and everything to offset the flooding and be able to use that. And I was just wondering if the city finally decided to, to take it or... It, it is identified in the park's master plan as a possibility for to have a park there. There's a similar park in uh, uh, Harupa where it's a sports park, but it's also a basin. So that, that was kind of the idea when the master plan was developed. But again, it's it's right outside the city boundaries. It require an annexation for us to do anything there. Okay, I was just curious. Okay, let's see. Uh, where were we? 9.7 maintenance division report. Okay. So in the month of October, we had 118 work orders submitted, 105 completed. Uh, over since June, we've been trying to keep up with um, some plant replacement at our parks and our right of ways and trees, um, trees that have either just some of the par- that didn't survive, a lot of them get hit by cars, uh, things in the right of way going down Newport. So over uh, since June, we've planted over 1,400 replacement plants and 200 trees, and we're almost done with that project. And I don't ever mind uh, just keep planting trees. I'm okay with that. So we'll see. We're putting them in places that even at parks that didn't have them in planters, we're adding some trees in those. It just helps um, the environment there. Uh, also, the maintenance crew, and and that is all in house that we're doing those maintenance crew. You can see uh, over at Lyle Marsh Park, there is the fence project. There was a project done years back. The fence has just been falling apart on one side. So we're removing part of that fence, putting it, replacing it where kids a long time ago had broken it on the other side to where it, along the trail, the fence is still there. So we're kind of taking parts from one, put it to the other, and then cleaning up the area that's there. Uh, we've painted some picnic tables, as you can see, the color to match the playgrounds, just to bring some uh, color to the park other than, that, you know, so the playground and everything, it just flows through the park. Uh, 
But that's all I have for the maintenance update. If you guys have any questions going on for maintenance. Bryce, are all our parks uh, watered with reclaimed? No, they're not. Uh, a good portion of them are. We have um, probably about four. Well, there's more than that. Some of them are actually piped to be reclaimed. Um, like Hidden Hills is piped to be reclaimed. So it has all the purple boxes, all that underground at the street. Um, it is actually, well, it's tied into the reclaimed pipe, but that pipe, EMWD, hasn't tied into the reclaimed uh, water yet. It's a project they have going on in the next two years. It's supposed to get to there. So they'll, they'll be able to plug it in and it's just reclaimed. But most of our parks are. Um, Lyle Marsh, Lazy Creek, and La Ladera are not uh, reclaimed. So, yeah, there's some of them aren't, and some of them are, and that, it is a big difference uh, water wise, cost wise for the reclaimed. Mm -hmm. And we're working on some other ones with um, EMWD to hopefully be able to get those uh, to be able to get reclaimed on some of the bigger parks. Thank you. So, yep. Okay, moving right along. Um, item number 10. Uh, do we have any reports at all from the commissioners on any committee activities? Well, I would like to remark that Bill and I did get together, but it's been months ago, concerning the uh, master plan and revising it. And we left off with the need to have a study done. And I was wondering, has anything happened with regard to getting a consultant to do that? Because one of the things we'd like to do is sit down with that consultant and also review the one we've got and where we feel the questions ought to be positioned. We did contact one communications firm and we received a proposal. Uh, but based on that, um, I'm recommending that we do a full RFP um, for it and, and get multiple proposals. I, I felt like the proposal I did receive from a communications firm that we already work with on some other items, uh, other projects, wasn't robust enough for what we're looking for. I, I, um, when we brought this item forward to the commission in September, um, it seemed like the commission was very concerned about, um, rightfully so, engaging enough people, especially since there's so many new people in town. And um, there were some comments about um, maybe not getting enough responses during the first master plan process or trying to get more than we did in the first master plan process. So uh, the, I wasn't really satisfied with the proposal that uh, we received, and so we're going to put it out and try to get a few more really and then, then, then bring that back to the commission. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. For sure the demographics have changed, and we do need more robust numbers. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Moving right along. Uh, future agenda requests. <clears throat> Reference to the joint meeting between the commissions and the committees and the senior transportation and trail enhancements. Anything uh, coming up on any of those at the present time? Well, I just thought of something which I should have asked before we got there. Have we got any report regarding what the Rangers have been up to? I... Yep. Sorry, I usually have the report on the maintenance update. We were having issues trying to get their the their cut sheet off of there. Uh, we were dealing with them trying our the actual manufacturer uh, developer and getting that fixed. So I wasn't able to get those, but the Rangers are actually pretty busy. So not only are they doing their campfire programs, their little programs, but they've been helping, uh, like this week, they've been helping uh, the police department um, with, there's issues at one of the middle schools and some tagging at a different park that was uh, near there. So morning and afternoon, we're trying to have them uh, deter some, help the kids. They've given them, um, trash pickers to help pick up and they get stickers and hats for it, you know, things like that. So make it a positive out of there, but also try to deter any of the riffraff out of there. So um, they are, and they're also been helping a lot with as it's not that we have a big homeless issue, but as they try to remove or get some of the homeless out of Cherry Hills, they start moving into other areas at the park. So we've had some issues um, with them at the park and, uh, with PD's help and the, the Rangers helping getting them uh, either help or if it's if we always offer the help with them with the pop team or, or it's getting them out of the park. Okay. So they are very busy. At the present time, how many uh, park rangers do we have? Two. Two. Three in it. Two. 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 Two park rangers, yes. I, I have, sorry, I have another maintenance uh, question regarding the Salt Creek Trail. In uh, August, the county did a presentation here, great presentation, and it looked like they were trying to get the city to take over maintenance of the trail. I'm just wondering what's happening there. We had a subsequent meeting with um, the uh, Director Brown regarding that. Um, we're still working out some details with them on, on what that turnover might look like and 
um, uh, trail cost. Well, one of the um, things we were uh, that that they missed as far as the maintenance proposal was also the traffic signals that they installed for <laughs> for the crosswalk. So we're I'm working with the engineering team to see how that could roll into our our maintenance agreement we have on all the other crosswalk and traffic signals. So we're we're still working that out. It's still active conversation. I, it's definitely a great amenity. It, it's great that the county. Uh, was able to dedicate the the funds and resources to build it. I think it um, does make sense for us to uh, the city to help maintain it because it um, it's all within our, our city boundaries. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Are they still working on a signal for uh, Salt Creek Crossing there? You mean at Antelope? Antelope, yeah. Um, that won't be worked on until um, the continuation of the trails developed. Then once that's developed, then that that signal yeah. crossing will be solved. <clears throat> Well, my getting getting back to that is the trail then going to go where it starts out the gate at Oasis when you come right out the gate. That's where the trail is picking up. Are they going to go from there up to the top of the hill on that side of the street, on the west side of the street, and complete it at the top, put in a signal maybe or not? Because coming down in front of the rest home now, that is, that's not wide enough to be a trail. I mean, it's supposed to be, what, 14 feet? And that's far from being 14 feet. So how does that fit into the trail part of it? And I know the trail is county trail. And I don't know, maybe you're working on that too, aren't you, on a county trail? That was part of the update that, uh, just to remind the commission, that was part of the update that the county uh, provided in August, that they have still some funds available that they would allocate towards that feasibility study to make sure that alignment makes yeah, sense. Yeah, right. The crossing and then yeah, Ultimately, they places. want to continue along the... Um, what would it be the west side of Antelope, but they have to obtain Caltrans approval. Yeah, that's a Caltrans right away. And there's some issues with topography. Mm -hmm. Felt it was slight. It, there's going to be a lot of earthwork to make it work. Right, because I I talked to uh, Adami and Belly White. Neither one of them want to have anything to do with landscaping that dirt area. Or it's fine by me. With it. And so I mentioned it to the city. I mentioned it to the mayor, and I mentioned it to Armando the other day at the breakfast, and he said they were working on it. Now, I don't know what they're talking about when they say working on it, but is there something in the works where they're going to make that look a little nicer, do you know? Or? Yeah, d definitely. That's what uh, the, county, the county committed to is allocating funds so we can hire a consultant, do a fe feasibility study, figure out all those nuances of where the trail should go, where the crossing should go, so then it can be built. Okay. Uh, on a kind of a different issue, I wanted to bring it up. I didn't know where. So there was some traffic on social media a couple of weeks ago. There was a lady that went to Cabian Park, and she visited the restroom, and there was a homeless encampment. So she went on to the social media to rant and rave about what a poor job the city was doing. So I kind of watched it for a while and couldn't help myself. I waited, and I said, well, it's not a city park. It's a county park. <laughs> we discussed Cabian Park this morning. So there was, pro was there a meeting today? Yeah, we had okay. a meeting earlier. So there was probably, I don't know, 100 people that jumped in. And um, so I finally weighed in and said, look, I reached out to the county. They're going to come out and deal with it. And they did. And then come to find out the homeless encampment was on private property. It was on someone's house. It was on the rear end of their property. And they probably didn't even know it because the way those lots are laid out, they're pretty large. Yeah. But I just I bring it up only because it's fascinating to me Two things. One, people don't pay attention on social media. <laughs> they just want to complain. But we do have more work to do in terms of clearly identifying who's in charge of what. There's still some confusion out there. There's blurring of the lines. Yeah. I don't know how you fix it. Maybe when we uh, talk about the park brochure, that would be a reference we could point to. Um, so I bring that up under that item because I want to make sure that we bring that up some other month other than December. Now, I could have swore at home tonight when I looked on the agenda, it said December. I'm looking at it now, it doesn't say that. So I don't know if I imagined that or whatever. On, on the PowerPoint, it says December. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah so, boys, getting um, old is a rough gig. Anyway, so if I, I, if I, I respectfully may, request you move that okay. to January so I can be there because I think that will help solve some of those problems um, along with some other issues well, we can do that we can bring uh, back the parks brochure item in in january and make sure Thank the you. whole commission's here is yeah. there a link on the city website to the county parks so that people could click on it and go through no. i don't know do you no maybe we should look into that it's okay. just the 
parks that are in this city boundaries. Yeah. If people could connect to that and the valley wide, so they could get a bigger picture of what's the, going on. Yeah, yeah. It's the valley wide. There's a link. It'll well, it's the map. It'll show you the valley wide parks and the right. city run yeah, parks. To their website or the county so website. So Cabian Park, if I'm not mistaken, is just outside of. It's it's, it's out in of Paris. Paris. It's yeah, Paris city. it's actually Paris. Paris. Getting too far afield. So were they talking about the city of Paris doing a port? They were. Oh, people okay. assumed it was a Menifee. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Real quick, Scott. But maybe the county should consider putting it on their web page instead of the county. Have all the different city agencies their link. That's a good idea too. I'll That's where I would go as a homeowner. I'd want to. I'd go to the county. Yeah, is it more yeah. continuity? Yeah. Real quick, there is a full-time caretaker at Cavian, mm -hmm. and the Rangers go there three times a week. If anybody should ask you, <laughs> <laughs> they don't read the response. So it doesn't. Yeah, I know. They just want to vent. <laughs> I don't have any further updates on um, these uh, future agenda items. I know Chair Amarelli provided a brief update about the senior transportation, and we are going to bring back that uh, parks brochure item in January. Thank you. Okay. Uh, <coughs> moving right along. Um, oh, it's right here in front. Of you. you have something else? Oh. Uh, Chair enhancements, we covered that. The uh, uh, public art in the park, the uh, park enhancements, public art in the park. Uh, that's just going to be... Um, Chair Amarelli, for the remainder of the items, including everything under park enhancements, I do not have any updates. No update on any of them? Okay, so we just overlook those then? They're all future. Okay. They're, they're all future agenda items that we, we are currently working items. on. Okay. Yeah. Uh, are there any other items that have to be covered? Anybody have anything they want to speak on? If not... Move to adjourn. Adjourn the meeting at 7.25, 7.23, I guess it is. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, staff. Thank you. Have a nice evening.